All right, well, let's get started with today's topic. I think we've got about uh, what I was expecting. We've been having a fairly good turnout for these series. I think this is our sixth. Uh, we've been doing this for about six months, once a month. So uh, I appreciate you coming back for more each time. And hopefully you'll continue to join us as we go forward. So today we uh, are going to talk about using Jet Reports. Uh, wow, typo, look at that, reports. I got to fix that. Pre-built reports. Um, and how you can leverage those for yourself, okay? So again, welcome everybody. I wanna just thank you for joining me for the next you know, 30 minutes or so, uh, which is all about getting uh, and using these pre-built reports that we've got prepared for you. One of the great things about JET, I think, is that we try and set you up for instant success, and we do that by providing some free stuff that you can use right out of the gate, maybe with some slight modifications, maybe just as is, and you're ready to go. A little housekeeping first. Uh, those of you that have joined us before know these this kind of rundown. Uh, but since this is a GoToWebinar, webinar, everybody is on mute. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the question box or the chat. I won't really get a chance probably to answer those. But if you put them in there and I've got time at the end, I will answer those. If not, I will record an answer and include it with the recording when it gets uploaded. So we are recording this session. I'll record answers to any other questions that I can't get to during this session, and then we'll upload it to our knowledge base uh, and the same page where you originally signed up. So if you ever want to watch any of the previous webinars, you can always go to our knowledge base and uh, search for uh, success webinar, and I guarantee it will be your first choice to choose from there, and you can go back and watch any of the ones that you want. Okay. So now before we get into the content, we've got to do our normal kind of housekeeping of things that we want to talk about. So we want to know why are we doing this? Well, ultimately, again, we want you to be successful. We're going to provide you with as many ways to be successful with our product because the more you use it, the better off we're going to be. And I think it's a fantastic product. And I think it's something that everybody uh, who can use it really should. It gives people great access to their data. Um, we do have some upcoming sessions here. Next month, uh, Harry will pre be presenting uh, the new features of Jet Professional 2018. That is right around the corner. So if you want to learn about what's new uh, in this newest release that will be released uh, either right before or right after this session, be sure to tune in and actually see all the really cool stuff that we've been working on for the past year. Then I will return back in December, and we're going to kind of circle back to this topic. Today I'm going to show you how to access and uh, start using those pre-built reports, and then in December we'll talk about maybe doing some modifications to some of those pre-built reports. So we'll kind of circle back to this topic after our uh, little break with Harry talking about the new uh, features as we go through. The last thing I always have to talk about is who are we and why should you listen to us? Well, we've got this fantastic slide that the marketing department put together. And I think that's great, but really let's boil it down to, we have made it very easy for tens of thousands of customers, well, it says over 10,000 customers, in countries all over the world, we've made it easy for their users to access their data from their database in real time directly in Excel. I don't have to know SQL, I don't have to know MDX, I don't have to know um, any of those other fantastic querying languages, I just type in some parameters into a function and voila, I get my information. So that's really what this is kind of summarizing. We've got people all over, we've got uh, partners all over the world, and I think it's a really great community. Everybody seems to really love each other, which is even better. So for me, I've been with the company for about three and a half years. My name is Brian Robinson. I'm a training and reporting consultant. Look at that, it took me that long to get to my introduction, six minutes later. And I really do have a passion for this product. I love teaching. I love talking about it. I love showing off what it can do and how people can use it because you see the excitement when people start those little light bulbs go on off, off over their heads and they say, oh my gosh, I can use this in this way. And I've had people say, you know what, this report that I created, it takes 45 seconds to run. That saves me three full days of my job. I don't have to compile and edit. I just refresh it, make some changes, and voila, I'm now off to the races. And I now have three days more to watch cat videos online. So that uh, freedom to, to really free up time, I think, is fantastic. So let's get into today's topic. We have this really small agenda. And 
that is not the right agenda. My goodness, I don't think this is the right deck. Let's take a look and see. Nope, it is, our agenda's wrong. So my apologies, I'll fix that in post-op editing. So we're going to talk about a user case here. We're going to talk about our three levels of our product. That's one of the questions that I initially posted of which product are you using. Uh, then we'll talk about how do I get my uh, these pre-built reports, what are things that I need to know, and then we'll wrap it all up. Okay. So pay no mind to this agenda. We'll copy over that in a bit. So our three levels of product, that's the first topic I want to talk about because we have Jet Express, we have Jet Professional, and we have Jet Enterprise, right? Jet Express is that free version that's out there. It's an Excel add-in. It does have some limited capability, but it's great for just, hey, I need to do some financials, right? I want to build an income statement, balance sheet, those types of things. Or if I want to build some pivot tables, great, fantastic tool for that. But once you want to get into more type of reporting, more advanced reporting, that's where Jet Professional comes in. That's the full unlock version of our Excel add-in. And that's what a majority of the people here are using, at least according to that poll. Then we've got Gen Enterprise that takes it one step further. And this is a suite of products. So a lot of times people misspeak and say Jet Enterprise is what I use. Technically, yeah, it's it's a suite of things. It is part of Jet Professional. So you're going to have the Excel add-in. You're going to have the Jet Dashboard Builder, and you're going to have the Jet Data Manager. Now, when you go to write reports, you're still using Jet Professional in Excel. and Just Jet Enterprise encompasses the front end and the back end of our solutions. Okay, So it's important to know these three differences that we do have these. And so that leads us into our use case that Jet, maybe not Jet Professional, maybe Jet Express or Jet Enterprise or whatever it is, is now the default reporting solution for your company. So it's installed on your machine. What do you do next? Right? That's a, a big thing. I, I don't know what to do next. Do I go out and watch tutorial videos? Do I read the knowledge base and be bored to tears? Who knows? Right? So what we want to do is say, you know what? Really, the first step that you should do is maybe download some of our free reports. And there's a couple different ways you can get there. Google is fantastic. But I think the best way is if you've already got Jet installed on your machine, whether it's Express or Professional or Enterprise, right? go to your help section right in the Jet ribbon in Excel and go to the resources. When you go to the resources, it's going to open up a new web page. Here it comes. And look at this. There's this section called reports. So I'll bring that on up. Click on there, and it's going to ask you what is your data source. And this is why I asked who's out there and what data sources are you currently using. Now you'll notice that I have a couple different choices. I can download the report player for AX, NAV, or GP, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, or you can download just the reports. Okay? So let's start with the report player. What is the report player? Well, let's get this stuff out of the way. The report player is just a nice little standalone app that lets you organize and find your reports and dashboards that you have stored on your machine. Right? So I access that by going to the help and the resources. I download it from here of the proper data source that I'm using, and I install that little app. And now when I run that app, here is the report player. And it's just a little window that has previews of your reports. Any one of these reports, I can click on and flip that on over and get some information about that report. Hey, great. This is a detailed overview of company's financial situation. It includes a balance sheet, income statement, and many other KPIs that are derived from these two documents. Fantastic. It tells me that it's Dynamics Nav, that it's a finance type report, and it was created by Jet Reports. So I can go through and look at any one of these at any point in time. I can even scroll, you know this way and that way to find those reports. And they've got those little titles there. So that's one way to do it. Now, the problem that I have with the report player is, or at least some people have, is they don't have the permissions to install new stuff on their computer. So if I say you need to install the report player, uh, well, Brian, I can't do that. I don't have permissions to, to do that. That's where our report images and reports can come into play. So this is if you already have the report player or if you can't install it, install it, you can download these. And we're constantly adding to these reports. Uh, I think GP and AX were around 60. I think NAV were about 100 right now, free reports. And we're constantly updating those with newer versions and newer reports. So if you already have the report player, you can just download these. Or you can just download them and, and, and unzip them wherever you want. Now to access the, the reports themselves, right, the report player, 
by default, we'll put it in your My Documents folder and you can see a little thing called My Reports. And as I open that up, you can see My Reports and here are all those same reports that I saw before in the report player. So you have two different ways of accessing them, the report player to kind of browse through them and take a look at the previews, or you go right into Windows and download and open them directly from there. Okay. So use the report player and install it. Just download the reports and use those. So now you've got the reports, right? What do I do next? Well, the first thing that you're probably gonna do is find a report that sounds interesting to you. Okay? But as you look at these reports, you know, you'll notice that there's some naming conventions to them. And this brings up the topic of why did I ask what product are you currently using? of ours, Express, Professional, or Enterprise. Because you'll notice that as I go through these, these are my NAV reports here, right? Some of them just say NAV and then gives it a title. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll find that we have some that say NAV Enterprise. Ah, that probably gives me an idea that those are just enterprise type reports. As I come through, look, I've got this one that says Professional. Okay, so we've got three different tiers of our reports. We've got the essentially the ones that aren't labeled, that means whether you're an express or a professional or an enterprise user, you can use that report. But if it says professional, right, you have to have at least professional to access and use that report. If it says enterprise, you need to have enterprise in order to use those, okay? So for those of you that are using Express, you're gonna be able to access all the ones that don't say professional or enterprise. I think there, for NAV, there's about 60 of those. Uh, don't quote me on that. I don't know if I remember off the top of my head. Maybe it's closer to 50. Uh, the professional ones, I think there's an additional like 35 or 40 on top of that. And then enterprise, I think there's about 20, at least for the NAV. I don't know the proportions for the GP and the X off the top of my head. But those are things you want to look out for. Okay? So that's really, really important. So let's say I just want to take a look at a report. Well, why don't we go ahead and start with ah, this one, NAV customer sales and profitability. It doesn't say professional, it doesn't say enterprise. So as an express user, I can use that. As a professional user, I can use that. As an enterprise user, I can use that. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this directly up here and I'll bring this on over so we can see it. And as I look at this, ah, it's just a simple sales and profitability and it's got different tabs as I go through here. Right, so I can kind of take a look at that and you'll you'll note that oh, well, I don't sell to Sweden. Why are they listed here? Well, these were built with a uh, sample database and in that sample database they sold to Sweden. So whether you sell there or not, when you first open it up, it's gonna use that stored data of what it was saved as. Okay? But I always say the very first thing you should do, ignore all the other tabs, but find the README tab. Right? Every single one has it. And it's really important that you learn it, you know it, you live it, as Brad says here. Right? So we want to make sure we read that information. Okay? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to look through and I'm going to say, oh, Brian said to find the README tab. Oh, there's a report. Oh, here it is, README tab. Okay? And this is going to give you some really important information. First off, just some general information about the report. If you were to look, that actually is the same description in the report player of what that's pulling there. It tells you what version of JET you should be using. Well, this says Express or Essentials. Essentials is the old name for JET Professional. So JET Essentials or JET Professional. And then it's got some additional information. Sometimes we have pivot tables, we've got calculated fields, we've got stuff that we've inserted that we thought maybe you should know these types of things. So this report is really based off one big table and we built pivot tables off of it. And within those pivot tables, we created some calculated fields and we just want you to know how we derive those, right? So that way, you know, sales amount is actually sales amount actual plus the sales amount expected. If you don't count sales amount expected, you probably want to know that sales amount is not really what you want to use. You probably want to use sales amount actual, okay? So just some really good information in there. Then it talks about some slicers, right? And if you're using prior to Excel 2010, hopefully you're still not on, 2007, but some people still are out there. If you're using an older version of Excel, the slicers just simply won't work. And what are my slicers? These are these little fun little things over here that I can click on and change my charts and my graphs, all that good stuff, right? So if you're familiar with pivot tables, you should be familiar with slicers. I think they're a really great thing. If you don't know about them, you know, take a look into pivot tables. I think it's a fantastic tool within Excel. If you're not using it, I think you're, you're missing out there. 
So, okay, so I read the readme file. I meet the requirements. I'm on the current version of JET. I, I understand that there's these calculated fields. I'm on the correct version of Excel. Uh, the rest of this, you know, just general information about JET and where you can go. These, uh, these express versions, right, will have a tab for the report, and this is where all the data is being stored. It's just one big massive table. And then we built pivot tables off each of those, and we have little charts and graphs off of each of those. That means these are just pivot tables, and I can just add, if I want to add a new slicer, right, uh, I've got this customer sales and profitability. I can come up to my insert slicer button, and let's enter in a uh, city. I really want to get down to the city level. All right, so I can move that on up there, and I can move this on over here, and I can now slice through the different cities and see how Barcelona is doing there, or Atlanta, and all those fun things, right? So it's just as easy as quickly modifying those. Now we're gonna get into a little bit more depth in our next session in December, but that's just a quick thing that you do you can do with each of these, okay? So great, all the data is here, but it's all wrong, right? So how do I get the correct data? Well, you go to your JET tab and you hit refresh, and you might come up with a little report option. You wanna change what it is that you need. Hey, the date range, I just chose a single day uh, or single week in, January of 2017, let's expand this out and let's see if we get more customers. I'm gonna rerun that report and it's gonna ping my database and away I go. Okay. There we go, there we go. It took a little while to populate there. So great. Now what happens if you rerun this and it's still the wrong data? Or maybe you get an error message. Really, what we should do is follow a very distinct path, and I'm already off the path here. I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, okay, we, we read the README file. Maybe I look over this report page. Before I even hit refresh, right? one thing we always want to do is double check our data source settings. Am I connected to the correct data source? I've got many here. Am I connected to the right company? Right? If I just ran this right off and I was trying to get information from the UK, I'm going to look at this and go, oh, all my information's wrong. Uh, these these aren't the salespeople from the UK. Right? I want to make sure that I'm on the correct data source. Then I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, so read me, check your data source, check your company, and then hit your refresh button. If there's any errors that come up at that point, reach out to our support team. Uh, you shouldn't receive any error messages. Maybe it's I can't connect to the data or something along those lines, and our support team can certainly help you out with that. But it should just start working. Okay? These are just built off standard tables. Now, if you have a lot of customizations to your data source, obviously these reports are gonna need a little bit of tweaking on your end, but we'll again cover that in a separate topic. Okay? So Express users, that's all you really have to do. Open it up, make sure it's the right version, read that readme file, double check your settings, and refresh that report. Same goes for the professional users. Now, professional users, I'm gonna take it one step further, okay? So I'm gonna open up the, a professional report here, and this is our forecast to actual, right? As I look at this, and I can see up here that this says it is a professional report. Now, as I look at that, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find the readme file, I'm going to read over this. There's not a whole lot to know, so fantastic. I'm going to double check my data source settings. Oh, I'm going to switch to the US. I almost forgot to switch back to the US. Okay, and if I just go immediately to refresh, right, I can change these values if I wanted to. But what I'm going to find is in 2016, I was a master at budgeting. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see these. But if you look, my budget for every single account match my actual down to the dollar. That's how good I am at, at forecasting and budgeting. Now, has that ever happened where every single account you got down to the dollar? No, something seems a little bit off on here. So you uh, professional and you enterprise users, there's really one more step you should do. Read me, double check your data source settings, maybe try and run the report, but I think it's a really good idea to go back into design because once we get into design, sometimes we put little notes like this. Hey, by the way, when we created this, we had to use a 2013 data source. Okay? And so obviously we had to give it a date that would work back in that date range. That's why it's currently not working. So it's just telling you, hey, take this cell, copy and paste it in over there. Now, when you refresh this report, it's gonna be reflective of 
today's date. You can see it that replaced it with 1012, and now I can see I was always under budget. I always overshot all my sales total. So that's a little bit more information uh, that I would need to modify in this report. Same goes for GP users. Here's a GP report. It's a trial balance. Um, that's not, is that the one I want? And I'm gonna go ahead and go into design. And when I go into design and I look at this, that's not the one I want. Where is my, I think I opened up the wrong one there. So let's open up a GP report just so I can hit those people there and show you a little bit about this. Here's a GP report. It's a income statement, 12 months, and it's broken up by segments here, okay? So I'm gonna go double check my data source settings. Now for me, I need to switch to a GP data source. I'm gonna check my company and I'm gonna go into design. And when I go into design, you'll note that there's some other areas that we need to change. Right? We made the assumption, we used our demo Fabricam database and we used the segments and the um, categories that we use, or Fabricam uses. Now this is something that you might have to update on yours again. So it says, hey, change these to match your own categories so you know that they will match up correctly. Otherwise, your categories will be all wrong. So it's a really good idea for the professional users to get in there, go into design mode, just take a look around for those little notes and see if there's anything that needs to be updated before you refresh it. Now, once you've made those changes, make sure you save your report. That will save it in the report player. It will save it on uh, your Windows, you know, my documents folder. And now, since it's just an Excel file, you can make it available to everybody. Just, hey, go ahead and pass it along to whoever you want. Now, in our previous session, we talked about distributing reports to viewers. We've taken care of a lot of those things, like adding the keywords and adding some hides and fits and all those good things. But as I look at one of these pre-built reports, right, the average user doesn't really need this README file. So we might come in and say, you know what? Maybe I come in here and I add that, if we remember that plus hide sheet, to hide that sheet from view. And that way when I run this report, I save it and I distribute it out. The users don't necessarily need to see that. And look at that, I forgot to switch my data source back. The users don't need to see that README file, right? They just need to see the actual report. But I highly recommend that you do not delete that README file because are you gonna be in that position forever? No, other people are gonna to wanna to use that report down the line. If you delete that README file, they're not gonna understand what it is and maybe things that they need to change along the way. So really important that we go through there. And look at that, live TV, I've got some empty filters. Uh, there we go. Now I can refresh that. And you'll notice that I don't have that README file down there. So that brings us kind of to the end of what we need to do, right? Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is enterprise. And I'm gonna just cover that really quick because it's gonna follow that same sort of process. I'm gonna open up a file. I'm gonna go to the readme. I'm gonna come over to the readme. I'm gonna find some information on here. And there's a big thing that says, hey, which version of the cube should you be on? Oh, okay, 4.0. Before running this report, right? Ooh, what should I do? And additional information. So there's a little bit more information that you might wanna be aware of when you use these enterprise ones. But there's also this other tab, the very first one before running this report shows you what to do. These were built off our jet cubes. And so you need to point them at your own cubes. So come up here to the pivot table button, drop this down, update your data sources and say, you know, we're not using the JetCorp queues, I'm using my Jet Training Cube. Hit okay, it's gonna update all those pivot tables that are using those data sources, switch it to your current source, save your file, and now anybody can use that file. So this will take just a moment to give me a heads up that, hey, great, I switched everything for you, now you're ready to go. And you can see it kind of running off, fantastic, everything has been switched over, now I can go ahead and save that file. Same sort of thing, if I wanted to, I can add my auto plus hide plus hide sheet to my readme, I can do it to running this report. Again, probably don't wanna delete those for future users, but it's important that viewers don't see it. Okay. So, 
And that kind of wraps up what we want to talk about today, right? This is just, hey, I'm going to open these up. I'm going to start using them, but what do I need to do before I use them? Now, in the next session in December, we'll talk about making some modifications to this. Maybe you need to add a new filter. Maybe you need to change the name. Maybe you need to modify a specific field because in your data source, you've called it this and the other one, it's called that, right? So those are some things we'll talk about in December when we come back and talk about this after our little preview of Jet Professional 2018. But today we learned that we have all these pre-built reports. They're free for Dynamics Nav, for GP, for AX, right? And the AX is going to use our data warehouse and our cubes. We have to pay attention to the different levels, whether we're on Express or Professional or Enterprise, and use appropriate files. If you're an Enterprise user, you can use any of them. If you are a Jet Professional user, you can use all the ones tagged as nothing or with Professional. And if you're an Express user, as long as it's not tagged with professional or enterprise, you can use that. There's still quite a few out there that you can use. The great thing is you can dissect those two. How did you build those? That's kind of how I used them in the beginning. All right. So those of you that aren't uh, one of those three main data sources, if you're part of that other, but at least you can go through and kind of get an idea how we built things, maybe some more advanced techniques, uh, and try and apply it to your own data source. And then what do we learn? We should always read the README file. Read it, read it, read it. We always want to confirm our data source and our company, right? And then we always want to just maybe throw it into design mode, look for some notes, right? See if we need to change anything. So that brings us to the end. If you've got questions, I see we've got a couple questions here. I've got a couple minutes. I'll see if I can answer those while we're doing them. Why is the re report and refresh option when they both seem to do the same thing? Seems like one run option would be sufficient. Fantastic question, Kimberly. That has to do with how it pulls the data. Right? This is something we cover in our training, but bonus topic for you guys today if you haven't gone through any of our trainings uh, or our workshops. So we do have two different buttons. Refresh, when you hit refresh, that is fantastic for viewers because what it's going to do is it's going to take every single JET query in the entire workbook and it's going to run it against the data source. Okay? But as a designer, right, as I'm building reports, I might come in and I'm going to come in and say, okay, well, let's get our, I'm just going to build something really quick, rows, customer, and give me a bunch of numbers here. Right, so I'm going to run that report. It has to go out to the data source and get that information. But when it does that, it actually stores it locally, that information, the answer to that query locally on my machine. So now when I come in and I want to build another query, I can say, give me the first customer sales for this customer number over here. Right. Well, if I hit refresh, it's going to say, okay, I've got to run this query and this query. If I hit report, it's going to say, well, I already ran this query. I already know the answer to that. I'm just going to pull this from local, that local cache, and this I'll run out to the data source. So from a designer's perspective, it can save you a little bit of time. And I've had this save my skin on more than one occasion, really large reports, really large data pools. If I'm creating something and I need to modify something, hey, this report takes 20 minutes to run, and I need to modify this one query way over here, Right. If I hit refresh, I'm going to be waiting 20 or 25 minutes for that thing to refresh just to see if I got that right. And I'm fingers crossed. Oh, my gosh, hopefully that worked. And if it didn't work, oh, God, okay, let me go back into design, modify that query again. If I hit refresh, I'm going to be waiting another 20 minutes. The report button will pull back as much out of that local cache as possible and only run the queries that it needs. So from a designer's perspective, it can save you a lot of time. But from the average user's perspective, probably not going to notice the difference, right? So fantastic. Michael, thank you for joining us. Kimberly, thank you for that question. If you got anything else, feel free to put it in there. I'll stay online for just a couple more minutes, but we are all done for today. I hope we see everybody next month for our next session, and we can continue going forward from there. Have a great day.